Thank you for joining me today in this webinar on transfer eligibility. I'm Roger Blake, the Executive Director of the California Interscholastic Federation. I'm reaching out to you today as superintendents because we need your assistance in reminding our school site administrators the important role that they play in transfer eligibility. Today, we hope to simplify that process and give you a better understanding of transfer eligibility so that you can assist the parents and the students that you serve. First, let's look at a few of the facts. Almost 800,000 students participate in high school sports in the 1,576 high schools in California. About 15,000 students and their families transfer schools every year. Over 8,700 of those students are valid changes of residence. Those are families who move from one home to another, most often from one neighborhood to a new neighborhood, one city to a new city. Those students generally gain automatic residential eligibility. In 2012, the CIF enacted a set of rule changes, including and created the sit-out period. The sit-out period allows families the opportunity to change schools without making a valid change of residence and still gain athletic eligibility at the varsity level. This major change created by our schools allowed students to become eligible that previously were not. Last year, over 3,700 students and families took advantage of this new bylaw. Also in 2012, our member schools passed legislation that, cre and the, that created hardships that had to be documented. And last year, over 500 students and their families were able to change schools using the hardship provision that including providing documentation. Of the almost 15,000 students that changed schools last year, only 85 were denied the opportunity to participate. Of those 85 students, the sections found that the transfer eligibility included undue influence, changing schools for athletic motivation, or possibly following their club coach or their high school coach to a new school. Of those 85 students, 45 appealed that decision. Now the appeal process, the administrators play a vital and important role. And we need your help. We need your help to help guide those families through the process. To help you, the CIF has posted on our website three handbooks to assist you and the families. First is the administrative guide. This is a book specifically targeted for school administrators, athletic directors and principals specifically, to help you understand the rules, the regulations, and your duties and responsibilities in determining, making the initial determination of athletic eligibility. The second book available on the website is a parent handbook guide number one, Better Understanding Transfer Eligibility. This is important for families who are considering a move or have just recently moved. It's a simple, easy to understand explanation of the CIF policies and regulations governing transfer eligibility. The third document is the parent handbook number two. This handbook is for those 45 parents and families who want to appeal that decision of the section's office determination of eligibility. These three handbooks have been created to help you at the school site streamline this process and make it easier to understand for the students and the families that you serve. An important aspect of this process is your role as an administrative leader at the school site. With 1,576 high schools in California and over 800,000 student athletes participate in high school sports, the CIF relies on the school athletic director and principal to make the determinations of initial eligibility. That's an important step in this process. The next step then goes to the section and the, to reaffirm that decision. Often parents and families don't understand the decision-making process. It's important that as school leaders that you communicate clearly with your parents and with the students their eligibility status. I also personally ask you to have a backbone and the courage to tell the family and the students when they're not eligible. The rules and regulations of the CIF are created by you, the member schools. And while families and parents don't, students don't often like the answer no, 
Someone needs to tell them that. And that is the responsibility of the school athletic director and the principal to say, no, you're not eligible, and reaffirm that decision from the section office. Now, I also know that there are some people that just aren't going to accept the answer no. We understand that. And that's why we do have that appeal process in place for those people who don't want to take that response from our sections. We ask that you continue in the process and assist the families when they go through the appeal process. I realize that with everything else on your plate as a principal, as an athletic director, as a school leader, that this can be an additional workload and can be considered a pain in the side. But for those 50 students a year and those families that go through this appeal process, it's an important function that the school site has to play for the CIF to be successful in allowing these opportunities for students to participate in education-based athletics. Lastly, as you go through an appeal process, I urge you to continue to reach out and talk with your local CIF section office. They'll guide you, they'll help you, they'll answer all of your questions. But most importantly, we need you as school leaders to play an active role in this process to determine student athletic eligibility at our schools for the state of California. Thank you for joining us today at this webinar, and we look forward to seeing you out at the contests.